Silk live action TIFF series heads to Amazon Prime Video. Baby Yoda is back and cuter than ever. YouTube has a new most subscribed channel. The Duffer Brothers shared updates about Stranger Things Season 5. More about the jaw-dropping cameo on Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Eddie Munson in Stranger Things Season 4 may star in the Quiet Place prequel spinoff. Welcome to the Entertainment World by Papa Buffy. Amazon is officially moving forward with multiple live-action shows based on the Marvel characters controlled by Sony. Variety mentioned that the first series under the deal will be Silk, Spider Society. The series was developed by The Walking Dead showrunner Angela Kang along with Spider-Man. Into the Spider-Verse producers Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. Silk. Spider Society will debut domestically on MGM Plus Linear Channel followed by a global launch on Prime Video. The show follows Cindy Moon described as a Korean-American woman bitten by the same spider that bit Peter Parker as she escapes imprisonment and searches for her missing family on her way to becoming the superhero known as Silk. Stoney currently controls over 900 such characters associated with the Spider-Man franchise. Sony has released multiple Spider-Man live-action films in the past and currently works with Marvel Studios on the rebooted film franchise starring Tom Holland via Columbia Pictures. Sony is also behind Into the Spider-Verse, which won the Academy Award for Best Animated Film in 2019. Two sequels to that film are currently in the works, with the first, Spider-Man, Across the Spider-Verse, due out in theaters in June 2023. Earlier in the week, Studio Ghibli teased a collaboration with Lucasfilm. After the initial post, a swirl of posts invited social media to talk about which franchise from Lucasfilm would be and what type of collaboration. On the following day, Studio Ghibli posted teasing a Star Wars collaboration, more specifically about Grogu. The questions continued, did Disney convince Hayao Miyazaki to do a short for Star Wars Visions? Was this a full-length animation studio portfolio? At the end of it all, the answer turned out to be a cute short film that is now available on Disney+. The shot is called Zen. Grogu and Dust Bunnies, and it was released as part of a three-year celebration of the streaming service. Longtime Ghibli director and animator Katsuya Kondo, who worked on movies like Kiki's Delivery Service and Princess Mononoke, brings the character's childlike innocence across incredibly well. The little green guy feels like a great fit for animation and Kondo succeeds in making him even cuter with a hand-drawn animation style. This could be a test for a more substantial partnership between Ghibli and Star Wars in the future, and this is just a test run. But nothing has been said yet, so for now, I recommend watching Grogu and the Dust Bunnies. Comment below with your thoughts and if you would like to see more collaborations between Studio Ghibli and Disney in the future. Based on a recent panel discussion with Stranger Things showrunners, Season 5 will have viewers and their feelings. The Duffer Brothers said they pitched the fifth and final season to Netflix over a two-hour meeting that get the executives to cry. Matt Duffer said that it felt was a good sign that these executives were crying. The only other times I've seen them cry were like budget meetings. During the panel, Ross Duffer said the production was full steam ahead, with the first script already having been turned in and work happening on the second. Per the Duffer brothers, many characters will wrap up their storylines. They are viewing season 5 as a culmination of all the seasons, with a little bit of everything from the past. Season 3 was the big summer blockbuster season with big monsters, while season 4 was the psychological horror, but now they're trying to go back to the beginning. David Harbour also talked about Stranger Things Season 5 during an interview with Collider for his upcoming movie Violent Night. He said that he believes fans are going to love the ultimate conclusion of Stranger Things, as he put it. I know those Duffer brothers are very specific and I know they want to get that last season. I mean, if you look at Season 4, I have a feeling that Season 5 may not be as long, but it certainly will be packed to the brim with good stuff that you love. I mean, they really are getting better at giving you that home run that the audiences love, and I think that season 5 will do that so much. He also shared his excitement for getting to play Hopper one last time, saying, I'm going to pour my soul into it as hard as I can, and concluded by saying it was the role of a lifetime in many ways. Mr. Beast officially surpasses PewDiePie as YouTube's most subscribed content creator. Over the last few years, Jimmy Mr. Beast Donaldson has become one of the fastest rising YouTubers on the Google-owned platform, having blown through his goal of 100 million subs back in July. Now he has secured his spot as the site's most subscribed content creator, overtaking longtime Swedish creator PewDiePie. Being that PewDiePie has technically retired from being a YouTuber, he was excited for Mr. Beast to overtake his crown as the king of the platform, urging him to keep pushing toward this day. PewDiePie said, Come on, I've been retired for like two years now. I can't wait for it to be over. That's all right, he definitely deserves it. I hope he does it. 
Mr. Beast gave away a private island in a competition to celebrate his 100 million subscriber achievement, and now many are wondering what he'll do next. Spoiler alert, as you saw in the title, I am going to talk about aspects of Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and that can be considered spoilers. If you haven't watched the movie yet, save this video to watch later. Michael B. Jordan's legendary villain from the first Black Panther film makes a surprising cameo in the sequel, Wakanda Forever. When Shuri, the new Black Panther, takes a synthetic version of the heart-shaped herb that imbues the consumer with superpowers, she visits the realm of her ancestors. She expects her mother, her brother, or perhaps even her father to be waiting for her to offer some sage advice on her new leadership role. Instead, she finds her mass-murdering cousin, Killmonger. It's not all that surprising that Ryan Coogler found a way to work Jordan into the film. The two artists are close collaborators. Coogler directed Jordan in his first feature film, Fruitvale Station, as well as Creed and Black Panther. So it's not exactly shocking that Coogler would call upon his friend to resurrect Killmonger. The sudden appearance of Killmonger not only surprises the audience but manifests Shuri's anxieties about whether she will be a worthy queen. Killmonger let his thirst for revenge drive him. Shuri is in danger of doing the same and her tete-a-tete -tete with her cousin pushes her in a bad direction. This encounter could also be expected if we paid attention to Shuri's Black Panther uniform. It looks like a lot more Killmongers rather than Chala's. What was your reaction when you saw Michael B. Jordan back as Killmonger? Comment below. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date with everything that happens in the entertainment world.